Hello, Hackintoshing denizens. Welcome to Hackintosh Beat. I'll be talking about upgrading to OpenCore 0.7.2, Mac OS Big Sur 11.5.1, and some thoughts on Z590 and 11th gen compatibility. First of all, just to remind everyone that I'm running two rigs, a Gigabyte Z490 Vision G motherboard, Intel i7-10700 non-K processor, and Radeon 7 GPU. Yes, I actually have a GPU. I was offered a straight-up trade for a Mercedes SL, and I said, are you crazy? I also have an AMD X570 with a Ryzen 3600 and XT 580, which I bought for uh, $240 Canadian when it first came out. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I have everything working like a genuine Mac except for sleep, which I'm not losing any sleep over. <laughs> wow, two in a row. I know there are many anal retentive Hackintoshers who insist on getting everything working, and I have all the respect in the world for you. I have learned that most of the time sleep is related to a USB issue. In my case, I, I think the culprit is my Fenvi Wi-Fi Bluetooth card, but who cares? If I had to do it all over again, I'd probably not have gotten the vision board as it also uses an Intel 2.5 gigabit Ethernet i225V chip that requires a non-standard workaround. Using the term non-standard in relation to Hackintoshing is <laughs> Hilariously ironic. But Apple seems to be supporting it now, and I'll get that sorted out when Monterey OS comes out. I bought it mostly because of the success I had with its predecessor, the Gigabit Z390 Designare, and I wanted the Thunderbolt compatibility, which also requires special attention. But after initial challenges getting it up and running, there is a tool that I, I mentioned previously called Hack and ROM that has made upgrades very easy for all vision boards. And its specialty seems to be Thunderbolt capable motherboards. So if your MOBO is included in its uh, short compatibility list, I would highly recommend trying it. So, uh, this is the first update upgrade I've done that I trusted Hack and ROM 100% without doing my usual config plist compare. I upgraded from OpenCore 7 to 7.2. Uh, as you can see, it's very easy to use. I turned off the stuff I didn't need. Pressed update, it downloaded the latest Kex, and it didn't screw up my device properties or any of the other properties I manually adjusted. For any other Hackintosh setup, I would always start with the OC Gen X to build my initial config.plist, but then pay attention to adding your iGPU properties and other things like mapping your USB ports and putting in the right boot arguments etc. This is what I, I did with my AMD Hackintosh and the 7.2 and Big Sur update, and they went tickety-boo. But if you have a vision board, it seems that Hack and ROM has a one-stop solution that works very well. I then updated to Big Sur 11.5.1, and that went without a hitch. Took 30 minutes. Here's some update porn. <laughs> It's always a miracle to me that it works. Apple did release 11.5 before going, whoopsie, <laughs> we need to make a security fix. Everything is working on my end. I'd love to hear your experiences with 11.5.1. It looked to me that Apple was providing better 6000 series GPU compatibility for the Mac Pro, which is also great for us, sort of if you have a fat wallet. The OpenCore 7.2 update is a minor one. Security was a focus. To quote the update on their website, we understand the importance of security and this is why all 
our products are built with security in mind. With this release, OpenCore becomes even more tamper resistant by introducing Stack Canary support, which refers to protection against buffer overflow attacks. Furthermore, we fixed Mac OS 12 Apple Secure Boot compatibility. So it looks like OpenCore is getting ready for Monterey OS, if it isn't ready already. Um, already, already. Ah, mm. Regarding your curiosity about uh, can you hack and tosh a Z590 motherboard and 11th gen Intel Rocket Lake chip? I've read that it can be done and there are some videos on how to do it. The conclusion from the Dortania uh, Open Core website states, our overall impression uh, with Z590 is mixed. But so far we have not found any issues that we could not resolve or at least work around, maybe except the Rocket Lake iGPU drivers. Personally, I can't see Rocket Lake iGPUs ever working. It's a whole new architecture that Apple will never support. Please do your research as motherboard Hackintosh compatibility can vary wildly from good to not good at all. Needless to say, I'm not upgrading. And honestly, I would stick with, you know, a Z490 and the 10th gen CPU for now, if you can find the motherboard for sale. Some have recommended the Z590, but with a 10th gen CPU, which might be an easier combo to find. But as we now drift into Apple abandoning Intel, Hackintoshers will be left with fewer and fewer viable new options. As far as the other popular topic, the AMD RX 6800 XT and the 6900 XT graphic cards, they both work as of 11.4 without any problems. But I don't think that many of us are going to run out to get an RX 6800 XT for around $1,400, no matter how brilliant it is. While I would love to buy one just so I could test it for the community, I don't think I'll bother. I'm sorry. However, Apple did drop their versions of these GPUs starting at $2,800 for the W6800X single. I think what Apple did was, um, what they did here was build their GPUs, put it on eBay themselves, and then bought it back to justify these insane prices. Anyways, that's it for now. Till next, Hackintosh Beat, be seeing you.